Yes, 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 yes. First of all, we would like to thank Professor Mohammed Fahim and Professor Ahmed Hijazi, the examiner of our PhD student, Michelle Dragon. And uh, we would like to thank uh, Professor Saibu, who, who was a guest of Michelle uh, in Tokyo Tech. And we would like to thank Professor Sibirichi for his support and for the support of uh, all TQTIC members, the partner of our department, ERD. We would like to thank them. Thank you very much for your high support for our department, for our students here and in Japan. And we would like to say to them, Without your support, sure, we will we will cannot arrive to this day for the defense of our student, one of them uh, uh, engineer Bishami Lai. Uh, please uh, can we start uh, our defense? Please we shall uh, start your presentation and try to respect the time for the presentation. Thank you all. Okay, thank you, Professor, for being here today. My thesis title is Heat Recovery Enhancement Using Thermoelectric Generator Under Supervision of Professor Hamdi, Professor Kawara, Professor Yuchi, Professor Sai. This is the outline of my presentation today. I will start with an introduction, followed by theoretical analysis, then the experimental analysis, and finally the conclusion of the study. For the introduction, we all know that energy is mandatory in our daily life, it's used in operating factories running vehicles, using daily devices, etc. And with the technological advancements throughout the years, there has been a rise in total energy consumption all over the world, uh, reaching 450 exajoules in 2019. With this rise in energy consumption, we are facing many problems that may cause a gap to appear between energy demand and supply. Uh, some energy sources are depleting and we are wasting a lot of energy. Uh, so, researchers are trying to improve efficiency of power generation and finding new sources. Also, they are trying to recover wasted energy and to improve the efficiency of power utilization. Our study falls for this category of uh, waste heat recovery. So, what is waste heat recovery? It is a process to convert some of the waste heat to a useful form of energy, usually electrical energy. And uh, there is a big difficulty in recovering waste energy. That waste heat usually has a low temperature which makes it a low-grade thermal energy, which means low current efficiency. Therefore, traditional ways of converting thermal energy to electrical power cannot be used because the low output won't justify the high cost. Therefore, we need a simple way to recover this energy with low initial and running costs. At this point, thermoelectric generators, which is abbreviated as TEG, appears as a good candidate to achieve this job. Uh, a TEG is a series of thermocouples connected electrical series and thermal environment. And we all know that a thermocouple, when exposed to a temperature gradient, it generates, it generates a voltage. And if a number of thermocouples connected in series, a large voltage is generated, which can be utilized. So knowing that how TEG uh, is operating, uh, if a TEG is exposed to a waste heat uh, source, and on the other side, we provide proper cooling, this will generate temperature difference, which will make that thermocouples inside, inside the TEG to generate electrical power. A TEG has several advantages. It has low cost, requires simple setup. It's very compact. It's a solid state device, uh, requires minimum maintenance. It has silent operation, and it has an extremely long lifespan. The main disadvantage of the TEG is the low efficiency, but despite this low efficiency of the TEG, its many advantages make it suitable for waste heat recovery, especially its low initial and running cost. A TEG is used in many applications. It's used as a power source in spacecraft, like Voyager 1, Voyager 2, which are under operation for more than 50 years. Uh, used in waste heat recovery for, from the exhaust gases of engines. Used in waste heat recovery from the exhaust gases of industrial facilities by mounting the TEG on top of the chimney. This is the application on which we are focusing in this study. Uh, there is a lot of potential in waste heat recovery from chimneys because a lot of wasted energy is there. Uh, it's exposed to air and wind, which allow better cooling. It has a lar large surface area, which allow easier installation. Better heat transfer and a large number of modules can be mounted and generate 
uh, larger part. So what affects the performance of the PEG? First, the material properties and the operating condition. For the material properties, uh, the main uh, parameter is the civic coefficient, which amount of voltage generated per unit temperature difference, and thermal conductivity and the electrical resistivity. All these parameters can be combined in a single parameter called figure of merit, and the higher is better generally in performance. For the operating conditions, the main parameter is temperature difference affecting the uh, size of the PEG. And to maintain this temperature difference, we are required to provide efficient heating of the hot side and efficient cooling of the cold side of the PEG. Knowing the parameters that affect the performance of the PEG, there has been two research directions. The first one is to improve the performance of the PEG itself by enhancing the material reverts and its internal design. And the other direction which we are following in this study is to improve the PEG implementation in a specific application by enhancing the heat transfer to and from the PEG. Therefore, in the next slide, I will show a literature review of previous studies to improve the performance of a thermoelectric generator when used in waste heat recovery from chimneys. Some researchers are focused their study on enhancing the heat transfer to the hot side by adding a spreader uh, on the hot side of the PEG and optimizing the thickness for optimum performance. Others uh, suggested using fins inside the chim chimney and study different sizes and numbers of the fins to reach optimum uh, configuration. Others focused on uh, enhancing the heat transfer from the cold side of the PEG by using fin dissipators and heat pipes. This is an actual view of a chimney on which uh, heat pipes are mounted. And they conclude that the heat pipes proved to be Heat pipes proved to be more effective with higher net output. output pump. Uh, others studied uh, using liquid cooling system, using water blocks to transfer the heat from the TEG to the liquid, pool, the liquid cooling the system, and it concluded that the auxiliary power consumed by the pump exceeds the gain from the better cooling, and the uh, heat pipe system has a more net output power. Based on this view, most studies are focused only on active cooling system. It achieves efficient cooling and higher output, but it requires initial, higher initial and running cost and has a complicated setup. Uh, and in some applications, the simplicity and the lower cost of the basic cooling system is required. Therefore, the first main objective is to improve the efficiency of the basic cooling system for, for such application. For, uh, based on also in this review, when studying the liquid cooling system, they use inefficient water blocks. And when comparing to the heat pipe system, they neglect the covered area by the cooling system. Uh, and they don't consider the output power per unit area of the chimney. Therefore, the other objective, the second objective of the study is to investigate the performance of an efficient liquid cooling system and compare it to the heat pipe system, considering the output power per unit area. Also, when modeling the TEG performance theoretically, they sacrifice the accuracy to achieve faster salt and speed by using circuits of thermal resistance to predict the heat transfer in the system. And if they don't do so, they can't model a big and complicated system with a large number of thermoelectric generators because it will require a huge computational power. Therefore, the last objective is to present a model capable of fast simulation of complex system without sacrificing the accuracy of the results. For the theoretical analysis done for the passive cooling system in order to improve it, uh, I will first present the physical configuration study, then the model used to simulate the performance of this configuration and the verification of the model, then finally the results of uh, the performance of this, this configuration. 
First, I'll start with studying the pitch distance and field angle, and then studying the speeder. And the result from these two configurations I used to propose a new heat sink design with flaps to improve the performance. For the first system, it consists of a, a chimney. On top of it, there are several TEG modules, which are cooled by natural convection. And the target is to understand the impact of the hot stream of air moving upward by buoyancy on the other modules, and in this case, the variation performance when changing the pitch distance and the tilt angle of the chimney. For the second configuration, uh, it adds a heat sink to the, to the TEG modules and a spreader between the TEG and the heat sinks. And we, we are studying different sizes of the heat spreader. And the target is to investigate the conversion distribution in the spreaders and their impact on the natural convection. The result from these two configurations is used to propose a new heat sink design or modification by using a flap on top of the heat sinks to deflect the hot stream of air moving upward. And you are investigating different dimensions, flap depths and height to reach optimum configuration. For the model used, these are the governing equations in the solid domain. We have the heat diffusion equation, which is consisting of the conduction term, the Joule effect, the Thomson effect, and we have here the electrical charge continuity equation. And finally, the, whole, the governing equation of the voltage generated across the TG, which include both the voltage drop due to the resistance inside the TG and the civic effect. For the fluid domain, we are using the three main equations of continuity, momentum, and energy. And we are treating air here as ideal gas with variable density. And gravity is considered also because it's, it's an important parameter when studying buoyancy or, uh, or natural convection. For the CP model, we are using the transition SST model, capable of uh, simulating both laminar and turbulent flow and the transition between them. For the discretization, we are using dense meshing, and we are using mainly hexahedral mesh inside the solid domain, which is the most efficient type of mesh. For the fluid domain, it was impossible to generate a hexahedral mesh, so we used a mix between tetrahedron and hexahedron, especially at the location uh, in the interface between the fluid and the solid. So for the boundary condition, since the study is only focused on the cooling of the TG, the hot side is maintained at constant temperature while maintaining the surface of the chimney as a diabetic surface. Uh, and we applied the no-slip condition of zero velocity at the wall. For the surfaces away from the uh, chimney, they are considered an opening to the air, so uh, its condition is equal to the ambient condition. For the electrical boundary condition, the, uh, one of the terminals of the TG are assigned as ground voltage with zero voltage. And yes, from the other side, we are. Uh, this is the location where we measure the output voltage from the TG. For the solving process, we use we use the two solvers, ANSYS fluent and ANSYS mechanical. ANSYS fluent is capable of solving the uh, solving the governing equation of the fluids and the solid, excluding the TG while ANSYS mechanical is capable of solving the governing equation of the solid, including the TG, but can't solve the governing equation of fluid. So we can, a single solver cannot handle the model alone. We need to, to couple the solvers to solve the equation for the whole domain. So we use two methods. The first one called ANSYS system coupling, and the other one is called, relied on something called a performance max. For ANSYS system coupling, the idea is to split the domain in two parts, the solid and the liquid, the, the fluid. For the solid, we use ANSYS mechanical to solve the garden equation, and uh, for the fluid, we use the fluent. Uh, at, due to this split, uh, new boundaries appear at the fluid solid interface. So, in order to mechanical to start the solving process, we assume heat flux at this location to start the solving. And after finishing, the temperature calculated at this interface is sent to fluent to start the solving in the fluid domain. And then the calculated flux is sent again to mechanical, and the process is repeated until conversions happen in the sent and received data. This method gives a very accurate result uh, and gives a complete distribution of voltage and temperature through the modules, but it requires a large computational power because data keeps transferring between solvers until reaching conversions and can't solve large system uh, with large number of modules. So the second set of proposed method is using performance maps which is a set of curves defining all possible operating conditions. So if we have a system of several components and we have a performance map of each component, this performance map can be combined to find the operating point of the whole system. And if we modify one of the components, we don't need to solve the governing equation for the whole system again. We only solve it for the modified component, which saves a lot of time. This is already used in complicated systems like jet engine. So in our system, we have the TEGs, we have the heat sinks and speeders, and we have the surrounding air. 
and the T sheet itself uh, does not undergo any modification. Because the modification is done for the heat sink and speeder and surrounding gear. So if we know the performance value of the TG, we don't need to resolve the governing equation in each TG at each configuration. So we use that as mechanical by solving the performance of a single TG by assigning a constant outside side temperature and different cold side temperature while monitoring the output power and heat flux from the system. And this data is calculated into a polynomial equation which represents the performance map of the, this TG. Now, the, in, the, in the model, in the domain, we remove the TG completely and we replace it with the heat flux equation as the interface between the TG and the rest of the domain. And now Fleont is capable of solving the governing equation in the whole domain since we removed the TEG. This gives us fast solving speed, four, four times faster, and can model complicated systems independent of the number of modules because the governing equation inside the TEG are not solved again. The only limitation is it cannot compute the complete temperature and voltage distribution inside the modules. The, for the fabrication process for the TEG performance, we use the heater on top of it, the TEG, then the heat sink and a fan, and we operated the heater at different heating bar while monitoring the temperature, voltage, and power of the TG. We used the, uh, these values to, uh, in the model as an input to the model of the temperature and calculated the power and voltage. We convert the theoretical and experimental values, and you can see good agreement between both, both of them. For the CFD results, they are compared with the empirical formula for natural convection from vertical surface, for both cases of laminar and turbulent, and you can see also good agreement between them. Now for the result, you can see here the effect of exchanging the pitch distance on the average uh, heat transfer coefficient from the uh, TEG modules, the different TEG modules. The, here the curve shows the aspect ratio, which is the ratio between the pitch distance and the TEG side length. First, at small aspect ratio, as expected, the upper modules suffer in performance with low heat transfer coefficient. This reflects to the output power from the TEG. And by increasing the aspect ratio, you can see an increase in the output power from the upper modules, up to 78% for the upper most one. To understand the reason behind this behavior, I'm showing here the temperature and velocity profiles before the middle TEG and after the first TEG. And, and you can see here at, uh, at the higher aspect ratio, the temperature drops the, near the wall of the chimney. This is because the air has more distance to travel before reaching the upper module, which allows it to dissipate heat away from the chimney. And you can see here that away from the wall, we have a rise in the temperature. This, also, this rise in the temperature also uh, helps the flow to uh, overcome the viscous, viscous bound layer and it forms a higher velocity away from the chimney wall. These two effects lead to better performance that I've shown earlier. And you can see here, since we were, we were using the first method of answer system coupling, we, we uh, concluded the complete temperature uh, distributions through the TEG modules, and you can see the better performance and better cooling in the case of higher aspect attrition. For studying the delta angle, you can see also that increasing the delta angle of the chimney, this leads to improvement in performance up to 12% for the overmost one. And the reason behind this is because that when air gains heat and moves upward, and due to the tilt of the chimney surface away from the flow, this forms a void behind the flow, which allow air to be entrained from the side, cold air entrained from the side, leading to better performance. For adding heat spreader, you can see here, adding a spreader and increasing its length leads to better temperature distribution and better cooling of the TEG module. And you can see here also that temperature distribution surrounding the heat sinks in this case, if using a small heat spreader, this location does not contribute to the heat transfer to the surrounding air, but in the case of using large heat spreader, this contributes to the heat transfer to the air. And if we, we can see the impact on the cold side temperature by increasing the spreader length. You can see a drop in the temperature of the cold side of the TEG, and, uh, and you can see the corresponding increase in total output power. Uh, adding a heat spreader at uh, 40 millimeter length leads to 70 percent increase and up to 42% as the case of large speed. But you can also notice that a gap in performance between the upper modules and the lower one, which we want to overcome in the next uh, design by using the flaps. The idea is to deflect the hot stream of air moving upward away from the chimney. And we have two dimensions for the flaps, the flap height and flap depth. We need to find the optimum, uh, optimum dimensions. So we first we studied the depth 
And you can see here increasing the depth of the flap leads to improvement in performance until reaching a certain value, after which there are no significant gain, which is approximately 30 millimeters, after which no significant impact on the average transfer coefficient or the temperature. To understand the reason behind this, you can see here increasing the flap depth leads to the forming of uh, a cold spot downstream of the flap because the flow is deflected away from the chimney, leading to cold air entrainment in this location, leads, which leads to improvement in performance up to 60% uh, in total outdoor. And you can see in the case of increasing the flap depth beyond 30 millimeter, uh, 30 millimeter is the, the same length as the fence. So after 30 millimeters, the cold spots is formed in this location, which is not uh, important or, or does not affect the performance of the heat sinks. You can see here also that because of using the flaps, there are very small gap in performance between the upper and the lower modules. Now we studied after that the height of the flap, and you can see that changing the height does not affect the performance considerably. So it can be considered uh, independent. The performance is independent on the height of the flap. Uh, after that, we studied changing the material and using the conductive material, which leads to up to 129% increase in total power. Uh, this is simply because the flap, this way, when it is and uh, using conductive material acts as an extra fin of the heat sinks, leading to an increase in the effective area exposing the heat to the, uh, to the surrounding. This concludes the theoretical analysis. After that, for the experimental analysis, uh, we are testing the liquid cooling system and compare it to the heat pipes. This is the layout of the test rig uh, to, uh, which is built. Uh, it consists of a chimney on top of it. There are two, two TEG modules. One is cooled by the water block of the liquid cooling system, and the other is cooled by the heat pipe system. This is an actual view of the test rig built in uh, Professor Saito lab in Tokyo Tech, uh, showing the liquid cooling system and the heat pipe system. For first, for the heat pipe system, this is the tent layout of the system. It consists of the heater on top of it, the TEG, then the heat pipes, which are cooled by a fan. And this is an actual view of the system. And you can see here a zoomed view showing the heater and the TEG in the system. We are studying the performance of the heat pipes by controlling the whole site temperature at different values and controlling the fan speed of the radiator while monitoring different parameters like the whole site temperature, the output voltage, output power, and the consumed power by the fan and the net power. We need to find the optimum operating condition for this system at different uh, operating temperature for the whole site. And you can see here the impact of increasing the fan speed by increasing the fan voltage on the overall heat transfer coefficient. And you can see at first there is a large gain in performance, after which there is very small gain or increase in the overall heat transfer coefficient. This is simply because we are approaching the overall heat transfer coefficient of the TEG, which one component of the system. And we know that we cannot exceed the, uh, the overall heat transfer value of the system, cannot exceed the value of one of its components. That's why you can see here the impact on the output power from the TG. At first, there is a large gain in the net output, in the total output power, after which there is a small gain in the output power. But due to this, the large increase in the power consumed by the fan at high, uh, at high speeds, there is a drop in the uh, net output power after a certain value. So this is the optimum operating condition. And by repeating this at different hot side temperature, you can see all of them are. Uh, all of, at all of these points, the optimum condition happens at 5.5 to 6 voltage for the fan speed. For the liquid cooling system, it uh, has the same configuration, the heater and the TEG. Then, it, uh, instead of using the heat pipes, we're using the water block to transfer the heat from the TEG to the liquid. Uh, cold water goes in and uh, goes out as a hot water. Uh, then passes through a radiator, then through a bomb to recirculate the flow again. This is an actual view of the liquid cooling system and shows here a zoomed view of the, liquid, of the water block showing the micro fins inside the water block, which leads to efficient performance. The same uh, methodology is used in studying the performance of the liquid cooling system, but we have here additional parameter, which is the bump speed by controlling the flow rate inside the uh, liquid cooling circuit. And the same monitor the parameter. We need also to find the optimal operating condition for the liquid cooling system. You can see here the effect of increasing the bomb speed and increasing the water flow rate on the overall heat transfer coefficient. It's nearly constant because the overall heat transfer value is equal to one skisty, which is nearly the same of the overall heat transfer coefficient of the TEG alone. This means that the water block is already operating at, at optimum condition and no gain from increasing the flow, uh, the water flow rate.
So this point is considered the optimum operating point for the system. And you can see here the impact on the total output power, no, no significant gain in total output power, but due to the increase in the power consumed by the bulb, you can see a decline in the net output power. So this point is considered the optimum operating condition. The same approach is used with the radiator of the fan, increasing the fan speed leads to an increase in large increase in consumed fan, consumed power by the fan. But there are very small gains output power from the uh, TEG. Therefore, there is a decline in the net output power. Then this is considered the optimum condition for the uh, radiator uh, fan to operate. Using these two conclusions, we tested the system at different hot site temperature, and as expected, increasing the hot site temperature leads to an increase in the total output power and uh, net output power. The difference between both values is the consumed power by the pump and the fan, which is constant and independent of the temperature of the system. For uh, the liquid cooling system, we studied another variation when using an open circuit. If we have permanent water supply, the hot water can be disposed directly. We don't need a radiator to cool the water again, which means that the water going inside, going to the water block, will have lower temperature leading to better cooling. And there will be no need to radiate, uh, for using a radiator, which means less cost, no power consumed by the fan, and higher net output power. This is a comparison between the different systems showing the liquid cooling system leading to better performance by 8%. And when using an open circuit system with water supply at 17 degrees Celsius, leads to a 45% increase in total output power, uh, which is declined to 22% only when using water at 25 degrees. But when we compare the most important parameter, which is the area covered by the cooling system, and do the comparison regarding the net out of power per unit area of the chimney, we can see that the liquid cooling system uh, gives us a better performance, more than double the performance, up to 111% in total out of power per unit area, which you can reach up to 108% when using water at 17 degrees Celsius, or 135% when using water at 25 degrees Celsius. For the main conclusion of the study, for the modeling using performance maps proved to be reliable and efficient with fast and accurate result. No need to resolve the governing equations at EG for each user configuration of the cooling system. For basic cooling, vertical pitch distance affects the performance considerably with 36% increase in output power when increasing the aspect ratio to 4.0 from 1.5. At higher aspect ratio, our module's performance can exceed the lower most module. The delta angle of the chimney surface improves the performance of our module by 12%. Speeders allow heat to be distributed across larger surface area, leading to better cooling. Using large single speeder covering the cold side of the module leads to better performance up to 42% when using 140 millimeter lens. Using flat proves to be simple yet effective way of improving the performance of the conventional heat sinks. It reduces the gap in force to performance between the upper and lower modules. If its depth should be equal to the penicillins to achieve optimum performance, flaps to lead, leads to 60% increase in output power when using non-conductive material and 129% when using aluminum. Uh, using efficient water block is critical in the performance of the liquid cooling system. Optimum operation is achieved at minimum water flow, flow rate when using these efficient water blocks. The power gain from the improved cooling exceeds the auxiliary power consumed by the fan and the pump. Considering the, the covered area, it can achieve 180% more power per unit area compared to the heat pipe system. For future work, expanding the system to include several arrays of TG modules to study their impact on each other, test the system at higher temperature, test using macro chain, include the size of outflow gas at different speeds and temperature. These are the published uh, three journal papers from the study. Thank you. Thank you, Hisham, for your presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
So the set, uh, I mean, it has no moving parts. I, 
Except the location of the DG. Okay. Except the location of the DG. The whole surface is elliptic, except it's a perfect surface between the DG and the chain. Thank you. 
Rzucę na to This is a percentage, one hundred percent of my Oh, yes, I need to describe. Yes. Actually, the, yeah. actually, I yeah, yeah. I cannot hear the uh, yeah. yeah. exactly. We have the discussion Not so exactly. <laughs> How about uh, Saito Sensei? Yes. Okay. 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 Ok
Uh, yes, yeah, security sentence comment is live. Uh, unfortunately, I think that the internet connection uh, is not very good. And uh, yes, I, I, we could hear the Hisham's voice clearly. But the uh, professor's questions or comments, uh, we could not hear their voices clearly. I think it is due to the uh, microphone conditions in Egyptian side. But yes, uh, basically, the, I think Hisham uh, answered their questions. So I think basically, yes, Hisham did well. Okay, thank you. May I, may I have one simple question to Hisham? Uh, yes. Uh, I think, as you know, as you know, the interfacial thermal resistance at the contact, in, inter, contact interface between TEG and uh, uh, heat sink or uh, fins, very important to get the be uh, better results. So uh, in your case, what kind of material did you use for, for to decrease the interfacial thermal resistance between the TEG cell and heat sink? Okay. I used the cell of this, which is regularly used in CPUs and computers. Mm. Uh, okay. That's so, the uh, of one point to one point to one meter kilogram. And the rating question is, the rating question is, uh, what, uh, how much temperature do you assume or do you consider or do you assume uh, when you use this device for the actual situation? The same temperature which I used this experiment between 110 to 150 degrees Celsius. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, did you measure the temperature? I didn't measure, but I asked the uh, asked coolies working in some factories about the temperature of mm -hmm. the gases in the factory, and they mentioned to me that uh, this is the range. Oh, really? Really? Yeah, actually, uh, some company tried to use similar device to the exhaust pipe of the automobile. In that case, the temperature of just gas is much higher than the 150 or 200 degrees Celsius. I mean, sometimes it reaches to the 500 uh, 400 and 500 degrees Celsius. So if you uh, extend your results to that kind of higher temperature level, you also have to think about the you know, uh, material degradation of the thermal, thermal grease at the interface. So yeah. this is uh, yeah, one kind of uh, small suggestion to you. Thank you. Mm. Uh, 
Yes, at the whole time I use the tool to assume the columns. I go back to the I mean, I mean, compared to the case of the smaller acceleration, lower temperature compared to the, the other case of the red curve. That's what I mean. Choose the end angle of the 
Jim is it is from Z to Q. Yes. And you get it maybe one. Why not with why not with five? Uh zero is spectrum. Yes. I think most vertical, most, most chimneys has very small conversion angle. That was like zero. Yeah. Okay, I didn't mention. Okay, no, 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 I, I started from zero to zero. I have to. Yes, I have to mention. Just if I want to keep this range. Yes. yes. Because of it, if you select or choose, you want to buy the scale. Yes, but it's not practical. Yes. yes. Here you have to use it which with the line which which of our number forty millimeter. Okay? I I make a comment here to you. Why didn't we use as the bridge? It's more more powerful than ah. which is very rich. Ah, yes. 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 Yes.
I didn't measure it directly, but I think the impact can be seen in some numbers of years. Uh, is yes, of course, it's 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 I have, I have a question. This uh, splitter, okay, I must uh, present a pizza. Okay. Is it pizza? You know what's meant by pizza? Pizza is a place where the meat goes to meat and is straight. Ah, can it be straight? Can it be straight? Yes. Yeah, you have the fence, you need to say, it's it. Ah, yes, it's a bit it. It's a bit 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 Activation of the user of the PPG. That's what I have. I don't find it is safe. It's not safe. So we call it uh, fix. Some call it safe. It's better. And I find it is a research of the system. You can be more than one user of the system. Because they get the needs from the support side. Uh, and this is the I have read it in many papers uh, this way, so I use it. Yes. 
from the group? If that thing was new or a few. Who asked to understand? You mentioned sometimes 25%. And you came here, you are in average 79, and you said uh, the, the maximum PEG efficiency is 2.4%. Yes. Then it has to be 25% and 2.4%. Uh, I don't think I mentioned the efficiency which is 25%. Not 25%. I assume you need some uh, Maybe uh, the increase increase by 25%. Uh, not the actual value of the maximum efficiency. How much is the maximum it's, it's around this range of 2%, 3%. Yes, this is the uh, actual operation. So that you operating that low temperature. Maybe I. I uh, that, that means it's very efficient. No, no. <laughs> it is a minute. No, no, no. What you want to ask is a little bit more in the reason that. In conclusion, you will be right to speak to the patients. You have to find the key. Because the conclusion is that you get a cigarette. It's a single part of the system. Sometimes one person can own the diseases in the abstract and the conclusion. You have to reach all the same. As to the issue, I have to make the support thesis to understand what's the actual aspect of the issue. Here, when you mention aspect of the issue, in the two brackets, you will have to mention what it means with this aspect of the issue. Here, in the last paragraph, you said the main problem affects the result of school and active. I said you need massive full DEG. The first client is a first and uh, the second is a first one. The main problem is that the uh, this is a massive pool, yes. This is a massive pool. The conclusion is satisfied with that. Firstly, I would like to thank uh, Mr. Shem and to thank the head of the organization for a good season. Uh, this series uh, is a very important legal area. This area of uh, energy saving. The energy saving is very important nowadays due to the shortage in build uh, and uh, uh, very good effort will make during the season. Some of the remarks I would ask us to verify this. Uh, 
dimension world. The inner dimension world, not the dimensions of the Of course, 
You said it's a mission of Zoras and uh, what gets is rich. Yes, yes. Since the study is focused on the cold side, we assumed and like a perfect condition on the whole side uh, as the system operating with its surface temperature equal nearly equal to all scales temperature. That's the assumption. Yes. Thank you. 
It's the ratio to the, the value of the minimum um, case. This is what's the case? All of them the same. I started from a ratio of five. So at this ratio, I calculated the dissipated heat or rejected heat. Then all of the other cases are related to this case, but I didn't clarify my this. I didn't use some dimension, but I uh, used larger dimension and uh, do the comparison according to the real line, the real number. Yes. You are the C. Yes. You are the C. The only parameter you can change is Uh, I have the actual height of the chain. Actual height of the chain because it's natural convection. So, so a higher altitude, the slow wave transition. Mm -hmm. Yes, natural formation may yes, natural and natural formation may transition to plant at higher altitude. That's what I mean. Yes, you have to lie. Yes, in, in this configuration, we are not using any heat sink. So the EQ is called the financial condition without any heat from heat sink. So in order to increase our load, so we can compare to each other, we use the very high temperature at the whole side, up to 500 C. This is a very small uh, module of uh, yes, yes. If the, the target in this, this is this configuration was to understand the behavior of the natural population by increasing the distance.
Thank you, Professor Muhammad, for your comments. Uh, yeah, thank you again, Professor Muhammad, for the effort you did to read the thesis. Some of you read carefully the thesis. Thank you for the effort. And uh, we would like to uh, request the Professor Sidovich, Professor Saito. Uh, are you there? Professor Sumerichi, Professor Saito, are you there? Yes, 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 uh, yes. Uh, we will have any comments, uh, Professor Saito, Professor Sumerichi, do you have any comments? We all have a uh, review. Okay, so uh, thank you very much for the in interesting talk. Uh, I'm very happy to join the, your final defense. Thank you, Professor Okay, I just just a very small comment, the question about the, uh, the result of the numerical calculation. So could you show the page 89 of thesis? 89. 80, 8, 8. Yes. 80. Eight nine. Yeah, he is showing the eighty nine page eighty nine now. Yes. Eighty nine. The number in. Huh? Ah, sorry. Yeah, he is showing. And the PD, PDF eighty nine. PDF. Ah, uh, PDF. Yeah, okay. Sorry. Yes. Sorry. Okay. So. Yes. Yes. So you indicate the the cold spot. The when you install the flap. Right. Yes. Cold. Mm. This cold so, is, uh, mm. so cold st spot means uh, the heat heat sink position, right? Yes. So where the heat dissipates this part, okay. this position? Uh, no, this is not because heat is a little more. This is because uh, you can see that here I can get this cold spot. 
This is called air, air entrainment from the side, from the side of the engine, from the side of the heat sink. So, because the air is, uh, is directed away from the heat sink, this area has negative pressure. Due to the negative pressure, flow comes from the sides. And of course, from the sides, the flow has less temperature or lower temperature. That's why at this location we have lower temperature. That's it. Okay, so the that's this calculation is that calculation is the three D, right? Three D, yes. not two D. Yes, it's three D. Yes. So that's why, uh, because the okay, even okay. the you get the, the flow yeah. because the flow is the high temperature side to the low pressure side, right? So they, could you see the uh, Fig 4.32. But no, uh, back to the temperature distribution. Could you show the temperature distribution? Uh, I mean, I mean uh, maybe I can include the temperature and velocity vectors. Yes, yes, oh no. Okay. 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 Showing the flow of the air from the sides. Mm. 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 I uh, I still do not understand the <laughs> this phenomena. Of course, the uh -huh. I can share you. My, 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 I think it's okay because the, you calculate in the three dimensional. So if you show the different position, maybe I think it's not okay. It's similar to this case. Ah. Ah. Okay, okay, so I like this tea. Uh. Yes. Hi, hi, ah. mm. I understand. Okay, thank you very much. I understand that. Mm. Thank you, Professor. Professor, do you have any comments? <laughs> um, okay, uh, very uh, simple question to you, uh, Hisham. Uh, when you, yes, uh, yes, you did it well and uh, you examined the, yeah, it is a kind of a small case. Uh, yes, uh, the good confirmation of your proposal and uh, uh, your idea. On the other hand, if you want to make this system bigger, I mean, when you intend to scale up this system, yeah. what kind of difficulty will you encounter or will you have? Uh, what, what, what is your, you know? In case of study, so, that's mm. the problem where of the effect of the several arrays and the heat is needed from each array and the other one beside it. This may lead to degradation performance. Uh, mm. Also, we must include the hot gases temperature. So, uh, at, as we go higher in the system and higher in the chimney, the hot gases may drop in temperature. So, the, mm. uh, the higher we do, so we have lower performance because lower outside temperature. So, we, we can maintain a constant temperature as we assume here in the system. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Uh, that's so, right, that's right. For the liquid cooling, it's, it's, uh, this will be the main difficulty, I think. Because mm. the is very flexible. We can now mm. do it in uh, That's it. OK, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Sikorici. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Saitu. Thank you very much, Professor Ahmed and uh, Professor Muhammad. 
Okay, thank you for invitation us, uh, inviting us. Yes, thank you very much. Thank you. Congratulations. <laughs> bye bye. Thank you so much. 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 Hello, professors, and congratulations, Hisham. <laughs> yes. Okay, goodbye. Bye.
شكرا يا رامي